Renaissance Kingdom Wars. Is it going to be a win or a bin? Let's have a quick read through of the description on Steam. Battle across Europe, Africa and the Middle East in this grand strategy and RTS hybrid. The year is 1510. You are one of hundreds of landless mercenary captains. Earn the rank of Lord and rise up through your kingdom's hierarchy to be crowned king and expand your empire. Uh, this game's not actually out yet, um, as far as I can see, with no official release date even uh, listed on Steam, but I have kindly been provided a key by the developer, so thank you very much for that. Springs to mind straight away that this is going to be very much like a Total War game. Perhaps it's a, a fairly logical thing, certainly when you look at the screenshots of the game in Steam. When you start the game, there are an abundance of messages from the developer saying they're a very small independent studio, they don't have the money of somebody... Uh, like the total war developers for example and not to expect anything of that nature is going to look a bit more retro feel which is absolutely fine no no problems at all so take that in mind for what it is so with this the only maybe slight thing that i wasn't too sure of how it would pan out is the fact that you start with no land so whichever country you end up choosing you start with nothing you just have an army presumably because you managed to persuade them to fight for you and you have to take a small hamlet and build from that really so you never start with any land or real resources that your cities are producing so it's just entirely a very much from scratch scenario the maps are very detailed in fact i think certainly from the um point of view of of the grand strategy board so to speak uh, there's plenty of cities plenty of uh, action on on the map you know things are moving around it's not dead it's it, there's seasons so there's nice snow effects on there so yeah it's, it's it's good in that sense so let's explore some more of the positives it is a nice feel to the game so as i said a moment ago the developers do set you up for believing and understanding that this is going to be a retro field game now i like that it's not trying particularly hard to be something that it's not it knows it's going to be maybe for the old school gamers who are used to uh, older games rather than anything much more modern uh, so there's no abundance of features here or, or, or visuals although it does seem to do the trick to to an extent as i said certainly from the grand strat strategy side um, but yeah the retro feel is certainly a positive for me it's fun to get your settlements set up so you take your first couple of hamlets they have no walls it's nice to start building everything up it's nice to get your walls built and buildings uh, built within the structures themselves just to give yourself more resources um, it, it's it's just nice to be able to, to see things in real time build up. Uh, you are a bit limited in that sense. You can only spend a certain amount of time each month because I think the game actually works in months and it, as it ticks over. Uh, you can have a limited amount of time in your settlements building them. Apart from that, you then have to do everything from the grand strategy map, which is a bit more limited and not necessarily as easy on the eye. Loads of nations to choose from. You've got the expected characters in there, uh, British or English as they probably were then. French, Lithuanian, obviously back then you had the Lithuanian Empire, loads of different nations to choose from and uh, factions, but you only start of course as an individual, but you are of a certain nationality, but loads to go with. However, I would say personality and attributes per nation are fairly limited, so you're not, as far as I can see, you're not going to get much of a different experience, uh, whichever country you, you choose in all fairness, despite being obviously geographically different in each one that's probably the only difference there's a bit of a tutorial in there or an introduction it just guides you through a few steps as to how to get used to the game um, it's the same for every nation you choose you can choose to do it or not it's good just to get a handle of what's what to start with definitely soundtrack and the audio is half decent um it's one of those tracks that sort of sits nicely in the background you don't necessarily notice it but you would miss it if it wasn't there kind of thing okay so on to some bad things and there are plenty and i'll try and be as balanced as, as usual of course so for me the, the ui is not great at all so um the screens such as research and diplomacy that are available to you and i just think they're a bit unclear and completely uh, unintuitive to be quite honest so you have to work out a lot for yourself some of the visuals aren't at all clear a little bit blurry to an extent um not not ideal and it's very hard to get a handle of of what's what and what you really should be doing and get the right info from these screens i feel the same with the real-time battles of course when you have combat which is a, another feature of this game because you will fight other people in cities uh, out on the fields it's a bit difficult to see what's what the user interface isn't geared up particularly well for being able to navigate things quickly, which is what you need to do. So yeah, it could definitely be, be improved. I'd maybe describe it all as a bit clunky, perhaps. 
There are resources in the game, as you'd expect. Food, silver, stone, that kind of thing, you know where I'm coming from. But there seems to be different types of resources or resource hubs, depending on where you are. If you're in a city, there seems to be the resources that are applicable to that city or town. When you clicked on an army, it seems to be applicable to them. And it's just hard to make a lot of sense of it. You can hover over the resource and it tells you a bit about what you're using. But it doesn't tell you how you can maybe bring a, a resource level up. So, for example, food. I knew I was depleting in food what or how much of something I needed to build. Because if you build, say, for example, a hunter's lodge, it doesn't tell you how many you're going to gain in terms of food by building a hunter's lodge. So you don't know what you actually need to do to try and balance out any deficits. So th this may just be me and I might not be looking in the right place or whatever, but it's certainly not clear uh, at all. So it's hard to know really how to control your resources that easily. And as well as that, it does get a bit confusing going between the screens and your resource values change depending on whether you're looking at your army or your main overall grand strategy screen or in a town. It does become a little bit overwhelming. The diplomacy screen is a little bit annoying and this goes hand in hand with seemingly being attacked by random people. I had a game when I was playing in the Kingdom of Lithuania and I was under attack by someone from the Turkish region. I have no idea why. It could be a bit deeper in terms of the relationship with these other nations and other rulers. There doesn't seem to be much. There seems to be some sort of stability factor, which you can improve by gifting them things or whatever, but that's it. There's no uh, conversation that I can see that you can have with these people to maybe go down different paths with them. I think it could be much, much deeper in terms of relationship with other uh, people. Now, although I actually really like the battles, so this is a good and a bad at the same time. So I think the battles are pretty good. So the, the troop types that you can have are quite varied. There's ranged units, so cannons, archers, bowmen. Uh, and then you've got the um, sort of more melee type things like pikemen, swordsmen. So a good, good variety of units. And the graphics aren't going to blow you away when you look at them fight. It's not great, but it's what you expect. Um, but it's, again, as part of the bad user interface it's hard to navigate a lot of the enemy units will eventually look like your unit so each unit has a little banner above them and i found that certainly in a couple of situations the enemy's banner looked very similar to our banner and the only difference is if you click on your unit then you can do more with your unit whereas if you accidentally click on the enemy you can't actually do anything so that's the only way sometimes you know that you clicked on your unit or their unit as to how much you can actually do so Again, it's all part of the UI, I think, visually. It's not great, aside from the retro thing, because I don't think that's the negative. It's actually just the, the user interface and how user-friendly some of those aspects are. So don't get those confused. The retro feel is fine, but you can be retro and keep it user-friendly and accessible, which I don't think it is entirely. So overall, just to sum up, this is not a negative review. Yes, I've given a few bad points. Actually, I do enjoy playing this. It's got co-op, online co-op, uh, online PvP. It's got a sandbox mode. Yes, there are problems with it. And yes, it's not an amazing game. But it's not even out yet. So I'm going to be happy to give this a chance. I don't know how much it's going to cost. But there's, there's some good things in this. And I enjoy the retro feel, as I've said a few times. And there are elements of the combat which I really like. There's elements of the city building I really like. Elements of the grand strategy map I really like. But equally, there's things I don't like. And for me, this is a, a bit of a 50-50 game. And I'm happy with maybe waiting to see where this goes. But uh, yeah, maybe one I'll keep an eye on for sure.